United States National Military Cemetery of the Pacific, better known as the Punch Bowl, by 31,000 of those who died in the Pacific War in World War II. Uh, the new, uh, I remember when the, the movie Pearl Harbor came out. It, it kind of allowed a new generation to remember with uh, s some of the rest of us a time in history that will never and certainly can never and shall never be forgotten. And uh, those who saw that film uh, hopefully realized uh, that what was intended to be a crippling blow to the American spirit became instead a rallying cry uh, heard around the world. And, and that spirit the same with 9-11, uh, that spirit uh, brought a rallying cry, a spirit that brought people, a nation, a generation to a resolve that it's time, you have to stand up. Nothing is free. You have to put it on the line. That's what our Savior, Jesus Christ, did. He put it on the line. The greatest soldier of all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, each of, of America's wars have fostered heroes. Korea, the Forgotten War, but uh, not without heroes. Vietnam. Three of my classmates gave their lives in Vietnam. Uh, you have de Desert Storm, once again, brought a nation together in all those desert wars. That's why we're able to meet here today. That's why we're, we are able to meet here in freedom. United in spirit and in purpose. And uh, throughout America's wars, just as many returned home without uh, decorations, without parades and marching bands, there were many others who remain to this day in unmarked graves and battlefields around the world, unsung and unheralded throughout the ages. We'll reflect on those men and women today. We'll remember them. And let the sacrifices of all who have served not been in vain, have not, let them not be in vain. But, you know, it's been said that those who never learn from history are bound to repeat it. So let us remember that one day in history, God sent his precious son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross. So that all men could be free from the bondage of sin. A freedom there. We're, we are still one nation under God. And there's one mediator between God and man, the Man, Christ Jesus, believe in him, trust in him, embrace him, and he promises eternal life. Uh, the battle hymn of the Republic states that as he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. And as the death of Christ was not in vain, neither are the lives of any who have risen to the call of liberty. We remain free because of their great courage and sacrifice. I'm going to uh, read a letter. It's been around for a while, uh, from several years ago. And this was a, what is the air base in uh, Arizona near Phoenix? Is it Glen? You remember? I, I can't remember. It might say here on here, if I can read this small print that I've got here. <coughs> But someone had written a letter complaining about a noisy flyover of the jets near the air base. And there was a response uh, to that letter from one of the commanders. And this response said, regarding a wake-up call from Luke's, Luke Air Force, regarding a wake-up call from Luke's jets, on June 15th, at precisely 9.12 a.m., a perfectly timed four-ship flyby of F-16s from the 63rd Fighter Squadron at Luke Air Force Base flew over the grave of Captain Jeremy Freckwiss. Captain Freckwiss was an Air Force officer who was previously stationed at Luke Air Force Base and was killed in Iraq on May 30th, Memorial Day. At 9 a.m. on June 15th, his family and friends gathered at Sunland Memorial Park in Sun City to mourn the loss of a husband, a son, and a friend. Based on the letter writer's account of the flyby and because of the jet noise, I'm sure you didn't hear the 21-gun salute. 
the playing of the taps, or my words to the widow and parents of Captain Frequis as I gave them their son's flag on behalf of the President of the United States and all those veterans and servicemen and women who understand the sacrifices they have endured. A four-ship flyby is a display of respect the Air Force gives to those who give their lives in defense of freedom. We are professional aviators and take our job seriously, and on June 15th, what the letter writer witnessed was four officers lining up to pay their ultimate respects. The letter writer asked, whom do we thank for the morning air show? The 56th Squadron Wing will make the call for you and forward your thanks to the widow and parents of Captain Freckles and thank them for you. For it was in their honor that my pilots flew the most honorable formation of their lives. Only two defining forces have ever offered to die for you, Jesus Christ and the American soldier. One died for your soul, the other for your freedom. Lieutenant Colonel Grant L. Rosensteel, Jr., United States Air Force. Wow. From the headquarters of the Grand Army of the Republic, General Order Number 11, this is from Washington, D.C., dated May 5th, 1868. The 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials in respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, and as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead? Assure this result and cherishing that, that memory and who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes. Their soldiers' lives were the a reveille of freedom to a race in chains and their deaths a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that cons the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism or avarice or neglect nor ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull, other hands slack, and other hearts cold, in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well, as long as the light and warmth of life remain to us. Let us then at the time appointed gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag that saved from dishonor they say from dishonor, let us in this solemn presence renew our pledge to aid and assist those whom they have left among us. A sacred charge upon a nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow or orphan. It is the purpose of the commander-in-chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept from year to year with a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to lend its friendly aid in bringing to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. 
Department commanders will use efforts to make this order effective. By order of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief, N.P. Chipman, Adjutant General, and the official William T. Collins, AAG. That's the beginning of Memorial Day. And it's a day that, that we observe with great gratitude for all those who have given their lives. I remember one of my, my cousins, Jane Chapman, her husband was shot down. He was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Timmy Artman, shot down and killed. What a terribly sad time. David Lee Myers from Milan, Bob Schnabelt from Milan, others. Uh, as recently they had the, the memorial wall set up over at Baylor Trucking and I, I got to find all those names. My childhood friend Leo Miller who lived across the street from me in Hampton Park in Romeoville, Illinois. I found his name and sent a picture of it to his brother Art. It's time that we cherish those who have sacrificed for us. And as a tribute to the American soldier today, I have asked, in fact, he's my brother-in-law, and, and who I met not too terribly long ago, a young fella from, uh, where, where are you from? Baltimore. I knew it was somewhere uh, far, a far piece. But he served 25 years in the United States Air Force, winning the Meritorious Service Award, uh, Chief Master Sergeant, two tours in Vietnam as Distinguished Flying Cross, a Bronze Star with V for Heroism, eight Air Medals, and numerous other citations and commendations. Would you welcome Chief Master Sergeant Jake Collars. We'll get you going here. You clip that wherever you want to and I'll fix this to you. See if you're on. Okay, can you all hear me? I'm sure. Thank you, Tom, for that gracious introduction, more than I deserve. Good morning, folks. Memorial Day is a three day weekend full of sales at the retail stores, full of mini vacations. How about a bunch of barbecue parties? How about family get-togethers? Now these are all wonderful events. But let us not forget the true meaning of Memorial Day. What is Memorial Day? To me, it is the day that Americans set aside to honor the brave men and women in uniform who have made the greatest possible sacrifice for their country. Some were only teenagers. Many were just in their 20s. The reality that your loved one has gone to war and has given the ultimate sacrifice can be summed up in five words. We regret to inform you. We regret to inform you. Psalm 116 verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his faithful servants. Let me tell you folks, there is no atheist in wartime. Every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine speaks to the Lord in his own way in times of war. We pray and we pray and we pray to just survive and get home. And yet, knowing all the risks that are involved, we go ahead and do our duty for this great nation of ours. How much more precious are these sons and these daughters, the husbands and the wives, the fathers and the mothers who gave all for their country? What more could a nation ask of its citizens? Let us never forget the true meaning of Memorial Day, a day that means so much to me. 
It is about taking time to pay respect and to appreciate the sacrifices of men and women who have defended the rights and privileges that we enjoy every day. On this Memorial Day, I stand before you in honor and remembrance and gratitude for all those families of the armed forces who gave their all in the name of freedom. I ask you to carry them always in your hearts and say a prayer for all of them and their loved ones. For over two centuries, brave men and women have laid down their lives in defense of our great nation. These heroes have made the ultimate sacrifice so we may uphold the ideals we all cherish. Ordinary men, ordinary women of extraordinary courage have, since our, since our earliest days, answered the call of duty with valor and unwavering devotion. America's sons and daughters have served with honor and distinction and continue to do so today. Although we may not be able to fully measure the cost of our heroes' sacrifice, we can commit ourselves to preserving their memory. On this Memorial Day, I ask that we honor our fallen heroes, comfort their loved ones, and carry our lives in a manner that is worthy of their sacrifice and pleasing to our Lord Jesus Christ. Timothy 2 verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I served two tours of Vietnam. First time for this young man to have gone into combat was a fright. I'll stand here in front of all of you and tell you that most men that go into battle go in fright. But yet, we know the risk of what we're doing. We know we're there to serve our country and our people and we do it unwaveringly. You know, I endured hardships that can only be experienced in times of war. But by God's grace, I survived safe and unharmed. But that was not the case for many of my friends and fellow airmen. During my first tour in Vietnam in 1965, two of our squadron's pilots were shot down captured and became POWs for the remainder of the war. Other pilots lost their lives to the enemy. The POWs returned home after a terrible ordeal in North, Korea, uh, North Vietnam's prison camps, but the pilots who gave their lives did not. Their families heard those five words, we regret to inform you. During my second tour to Nam, I was assigned as a flight engineer on fixed wing gunships known as Shadow. Our mission required us to fly at night against a known enemy. We were armed with four 7.65 mini guns that was good against the enemy person, but not against the tanks and the trucks they were using. So we were in a risky type of, of a situation flying against the enemy, knowing that we had no defense against the heavier artillery they were using against us. We had guns on board that would kill the enemy, but not destroy the weapons they were using. During the same time, I flew over 80 combat missions, along with the rest of our crew and our, our squadron. During the same time, two of our aircraft crashed during combat missions, killing 16 of my fellow airmen and friends. Knowing the risk of such missions, we still went about our duties unwavering in protecting our nation's principles. Yes, their names are engraved on the Vietnam Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C., along with 58,000 others. Yes, they are remembered by their loved ones and fellow service members. But let us, let us not forget them. Nor let us not forget that one million other military men and women who gave their lives during all of this nation's wars and conflicts. I ask you to keep them all in your hearts. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. 
Memorial Day is a day to honor their memories and let their loved ones know that our country has not forgotten them. I know my fellow veterans and I are honored to fly the flag which these brave heroes sought to protect. Memorial Day was informally begun by Major General John A. Logan in 1868, just three years after the Civil War. General Logan chose a date in May because flowers would be in bloom all over the country. He asked the nation to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. Thus began Decoration Day, as many of us older generation know it as. This practice is still going on today. As Pastor Tom said, he will be conducting a ceremony at Craven Cemetery to honor the dead warriors of this area. I personally ask each of you to attend this ceremony, or one like it, to show respect and honor to those who served in the military to protect, to, to protect this great nation. Let us remember, all gave some, and some gave all. Proverbs 10.7 says, the memory of the righteous is a blessing. On this solemn day in which Americans unite to remember the nation's fallen, let us also pray for our veterans and all who have lost their lives. Allow me to read a poem by Albert C. Caswell entitled, Bow Your Heads. Bow your heads and close your eyes and say a prayer for all those girls and guys and all those families who now so cry for some of our most brilliant men and women, our GIs. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, no greater gift can so be seen. And on this Memorial Day, please, please, please remember why we are free, you and I. And remember throughout the world in some deep, dark, cold ground, like someone's little boy or girl, who but for the greater good so gave that last full measure all they could. As the angels up in heaven begin to cry, thank them for the gifts they gave. Thank them for teaching us how our heroes behave. On this Memorial Day, all of those families so wipe the tears away, and all those children at night with tears in their eyes so lie awake. Now bow your heads and close your eyes. Upon your knees, say a prayer for all those most heroic girls and guys and all those families who now so cry. And why are we free? I bid you please remember why. I ask you now to bow your heads. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray the truth of the scriptures for our nation, our military members, and their families. We lift up all the family and friends of our fallen men and women in uniform. We pray your peace will keep them and give them hope. Please help them remember the sacrifices of their loved ones with tears of pride and sorrow, knowing their loved ones did not die in vain, but secured our liberties for another generation. For each military member and family, we pray for the protection of our military in the fields far away and for their families here at home. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also died for our freedom, may God continue to bless us and bless our great nation. Amen. Hope the one too short. Outstanding. No, that's fine. Thank you. Jay, I remember I was in high school and losing David Lee Myers, another friend named Bob Snaybelt. Bob lived above the King Hotel in Milan. He didn't have much of a family. Lived there and went through high school there. And he was killed in Vietnam. And was kind of slow getting word of, of, of his death. But it, it was a very unusual time. College campuses, many were protesting the war. But if the, if, if the war was bad, the warriors 
themselves certainly were not uh, America's bravest man answered their country's call. I remember this song from those days. Some of you may remember. Mm, if I can get in a key that in the country, hiding soldiers from the sky, fearless men who jump and die, men who Green beret, place these wings on my son's chest, make him one of America's best. One hundred men will test today, but only three when the green beret. Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Barry Sadler, I think, who wrote and recorded uh, that song. When I was in Miami, Florida, Vietnam still had effect. I went down to take my physical, uh, my draft physical, at the big armory in Miami. There were probably over a thousand young men standing in line for their draft physical. And they told us to strip down to your shorts and shoes. And out of all of the 1,000 or 1,500 men that were, were standing in line, I was the only one with boxer shorts and cowboy boots. <laughs> I looked pretty silly. But, uh, <laughs> pardon? You know, no, and and in, in fact, I, uh, I I might have told Brother Jay when I when I went into the military, I went in uh, on the buddy plan. Me and three MPs went in together. Uh, no, I, I I they wouldn't have me. I had some medical issues that uh, they wouldn't have me. And then when I applied for the police department, I just didn't tell them. <laughs> uh, sometimes no news is good news. You just enough said and you go on. So. But uh, I'm certainly thankful for all those who have uh, given their lives in the service of our country. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to leave home. I remember when my brother Aubrey uh, left for the Navy. And what year was that, Jerry? Was that 58, 50, about 1958? And I think he and my Uncle Harley had just signed a record contract with Starday, King Starday Records. They had a song. Uh, Aubrey had written a song called Family Reunion that was getting a lot of airplay. It's still in a lot of the songbooks that you see now. He joined the Navy. And uh, I remember my mama, I remember the day he left. Mama, my mama grieved. And Daddy, Dad had that, that look in his eyes you didn't see very often from him. So a sad day, but a joyful day when he returned. So we thank our, our military folks, and especially as we memorialize those who have given their lives. We're going to take a break, and uh, I assume uh, Brother Fleek is hiding around here somewhere, I think, in the back. So uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for those who have given their lives in the freedom of this country. Thank you for our precious Savior, Lord. And uh, I note in Scripture that Paul talk, referred to Timothy in a context of good. Endure hardness as a good soldier, Lord. So we thank you for all the good soldiers today and I pray, Lord, that you would be with us for the rest of the service today, Lord, and, and not only memorialize those who have died, but especially the, our Savior who willingly went to the cross and gave his life that all men might come to know him and find eternal life. We now dismiss in, uh, in your love and grace, Lord, and we'll thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>